Good morning, everyone. Today's session will be again about gamers. Who would have ever guessed? Uh, this morning, we will go through a bit more of the genome characterizations and look at a lot more uh, genome scopes. And maybe we will manage even to do a smudge plot. And in the afternoon, we will have a session on genome skimming data by CLS. At least that's the plan so far. <laughs> um, so today in this session, we will kind of catch up on what we have do, were doing yesterday. I didn't really manage to get back to because it felt like so many people had technical issues that uh, it would be good to give you more time to go through the examples we already prepared for you. And, uh, but because we also knew that there will be a bunch of people that actually managed to get things going, we also uh, provide you this time uh, some nematode data that will be like really, really messed up. So you can like really play with those. Uh, so after fitting a few more models, we will show you about how the KMA profiles can be used for QC. With Lucia, we have both uh, examples of where uh, genome profiling was kind of a lifesaver because it sort of uh, uh, helped us to avoid a real rabbit hole in a sense of something that doesn't make sense to do because you would be just falling. And then we will do a bit of a QC of assemblies with game uh, uh, spectra data. And in the end, we will try to get the smudge pot and harness stock, which will be, that, that will be also pretty cool. It will be a, a different way how to fit the uh, parameters to game spectra. So uh, if you would like to know more than one thing, this is, this is the moment to pay attention. All right, so let's uh, get going. Remember when you're fitting genome scope model, there are a few essential things that are quite often wrong and might lead to a completely unexpected results. One is that your one and coverage must be fitted right. That's absolutely essential. If you don't know what's your coverage, you cannot ever analyze your data anyway. So this is sort of, um, uh, a fundamental step. And then uh, you, of course, need to know your ploidy, right? And that is a lot sneakier sometimes, especially if you have lower coverage data sets or if you are trying to distinguish between uh, a genome that has lots of uh, duplications uh, with the genomes that has uh, that are tetraploid or these kind of scenarios. But we will, we will be talking about it. And finally, the best sanity check on if the genome uh, scope does make sense is to sort of check the expected genome size. And that helps very often. Because for it's, it's hardly ever that we don't have any idea. We usually know in which ballpark we should be. So just remember, your model needs to actually explain the data. So I will start with giving you one example of uh, so one of the things that is quite often done wrong especially on big genomes is the genome size estimates and i will give you an, a, a case study in crayfish data that is sort of explaining why that's happening um so we already discussed that if you have multiple regions that share the same sequence they will multiply the, the coverage of KMS. but what we haven't said is that these regions can appear on like hundreds of thousands of places inside of the genome. Yes, it can be really a huge amount of really perfect repetitions. And uh, that's the story of the marble crayfish. So it's a, it's a, this is a clonal cray, uh, crayfish. It was uh, constructed. It's actually one of the first sort of artificial species because it was generated by uh, German aquarists. And then it escaped from aquariums and sort of started spreading across the globe. And it's actually invasive and it went all the way from Europe to Madagascar. So it's a, it's a triploid asexual species with like about three and a half gigs of monoploid genome size. And uh, it's kind of silly that only 4% of the assembly are annotated as repetitions. But uh, the genome is very repetitive. And uh, the thing is, when we naively constructed genome scope model for the species, uh, we, well, naively, when we, we, we fitted what we thought is right, we found that it, we are super underestimating the genome size. That the genome is supposed to be more than three gigs, and this is one of the species where there is lots of cytology done. So we, we knew for sure that these three gigs are not made up. 
And uh, so we, we were quite sure that the, the length of the genome uh, in the genome scope estimate is wrong. And then we were digging where the, is the problem. And we kind of figured it out by kind of thinking about, well, how is the genome size estimate done? In a, in, in a simplified way, it's just like a sum of camera coverages divided by ploidy times haploid coverage. So the haploid coverage, we were quite sure that we got the right, the ploidy as well. So the only difference could be in the camera coverage. And uh, then we found that if we start counting all of the cameras, not the first 10,000 of them, but count every single camera in the, in the read set, we get a bunch of cameras that are there in, in, in the millions of copies. So we found that the most conserved and uh, repetitions are this, uh, I think we use lower K, this is K uh, equals 17. So these are 17 MERS that occur in the genome 7 million times. And uh, so if we like discard of counting those, of course we get a lower uh, estimate. Then we also got uh, that a bit of polishing that we trimmed the reads, which allows us to separate the error peak and the haploid peak. But the camera coverage is about the same. So it's, this is not what like really helped us to do the estimate, right? What, what was the essential was to count every single camera in the, uh, in the camera spectra. And very often uh, when people are saying, well, gen uh, camera spectra are underestimating genome sizes, that's just because they don't know that they just need to call or, uh, count all the cameras. And the reason why people make very often this mistake is because the camera counters are made by people that thought that no cameras after 10,000 are biologically relevant. But these people are obviously not thinking about the crayfish. And we actually were uh, trying to like track down of like whether we can like uh, sort of uh, search for um, like what could explain this super repetitiveness. And we did see that there is like a, a recent expansion of transposable elements of uh, many kinds, but we didn't see anything that is so super, super recent. So we think that there must be probably some sort of like non-transposable element repeat, but we have not investigated further. It, uh, Crayfish is not our, our model system. We just wanted to understand the data. And just to be sure that this is not a, uh, a satellite. Yeah, it could be a satellite. Uh, we, but again, we have not really investigated what it is, so I don't really want to speculate. Um, so I, we wanted to make, well, no, we wanted to make sure, but I also had a, a collaborator that works on this absolutely amazing Bombina, the fire toad of, uh, hybrid zone. And they had this big genome. It, it's, uh, it's thought to be somewhere between six and eight gigs. And, uh, and they had this genome estimates of like very, like they were like three, four gigs, depends of like which software they use. And uh, the, the, spec the model of the, the, the fire belly toads seemed to be like very well fit. So nobody knew what's going on. And again, when we just applied the same logic from the crayfish, because we learned from our previous mistakes, we again reconstructed very well the genome size of Bombina. So I would also like to thank Beate for sharing the, the camera histogram, well, for sharing the data. I was interested in the histogram as well. And again, you know, the, the most common uh, camera occurred about in uh, 400,000 genomic copies. So now uh, let's start where we left off last time when we were doing came spectra. So you have again, we will again have the eight breakout rooms. You, you, you have the, so the crayfish and Bombina data are there as well. So you can fit those came uh, spectra. Um, uh, that, that's fucking stupid. Oh yeah, so the, sorry, I didn't explain. Uh, the, the, the CM is the maximum camera that is counted and that's the parameter how it's specified for KMC. Yes, sorry. Uh, uh, so take a look on, the, yeah, perfect. So now, um, uh, oh shit, sorry. Just uh, let's go through the examples. We will again, sort you out in the breakout room. If you actually did manage to get through the histograms and models yesterday, then there is a director with funky nematodes. I think it's really literally called funky nematodes. And uh, the chemo spectra there are really wild. I, I can afterwards show you how the chemo spectra for all those species look like, like uh, the, the models that I think they are, right? 
because I, you will be missing some of the crucial things that I didn't really say what species they are, only the first letter of the genus name and first three letters of the species name. So if you will do a bit of Googling, you will probably find it out. Uh, but they all look fantastic. It's just like joy to watch this game as Spectra. These are like the most entertaining Spectra you will ever see. Anyway, uh, so we can get to work. And 